You're listening to the AfterBuzz TV Network. Now the largest new media platform on the web and your number one source for after-show entertainment. Very good, Gene. Johnson. After Buzz TV. The AfterBuzz Studios in Los Angeles, California. Presented by Maria Menounos and streaming live thanks to Akamai Technologies. This is AfterBuzz TV's The Last Ship After Show. We'll break down tonight's episode and get you all the latest news and gossip. And now, another post-game wrap-up show for your favorite TV show. It's AfterBuzz TV's The Last Ship After Show. Hey everybody, welcome into the Last Ship After Show right here on AfterBuzzTV.com. We've got Season 1, Episode 8 today, Two Sailors Walk Into a Bar. I'm your host, as always, Bobby DeMuro, joined by my panel, same people every week. We love them, Monty Bolanos next to me, and across the way, Marina Santos and Charlotte Broadbent. Ladies, hello. Hello. Now, we've got a very special guest today for you guys. If you watched this episode, which hopefully you did, or else you shouldn't be watching the After Show first, <laughs> Cassetti was killed. Spoiler alert, uh -oh. Cassetti dies. And we've got Tommy Savas, who plays Cassetti. Hey. Guys, in studio. What's up? How how are you here right now if you're dead? Um, you know what? <laughs> we did a cross episode of The Walking Dead, and uh, uh, no. no. Second okay. follow up question: Have you yeah. ever been asked a dumber question than what I just absolutely asked? not? No, that Perfect. was the worst ever. <laughs> cool. Yeah. Good. Good start to the show. We are going to talk a lot about the show itself. We're going to talk a little bit later about some other stuff you're doing. You're cool. filming a big thing that I want to talk about at the end. But let's start with Cassetti himself yes. on the show. Before we get to this episode, talk about your experience filming The Last Ship. What's it like? It, did you have any run-ins with Michael Bay himself? I mean, what's it like on set doing uh, it? You know, Michael Bay was there um, for the pilot, um, and his uh, counterparts from Platinum Dunes, the production company, were there for every episode, which was awesome. But, I mean, mainly filming the show was, I mean, it was a, an experience all on its own that uh, was one of my favorite things I've ever done. We shot on an active duty uh, naval destroyer in San Diego. Which, without Michael Bay's help, there's no way we would have been allowed to do that, uh, which was awesome. And uh, one of the other cool things was all of the extras or background actors on the show were actually real men and women in the Navy, which was awesome. Oh, wow. That's yeah. really cool. The, yeah. the good thing about doing a show about a virus that takes over the world, though, you don't need a ton of extras. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> That's good. true. Yeah. You don't need a ton. Theoretically, you may not need a ton of locations. E exactly. <laughs> exactly. Uh, what, talk about Cassetti a little bit. Yeah. How did you prepare for this character? Did you do anything... Do you have a military background with people in your family? I mean, did you do any research? What yeah, I mean, my, my grandfather was in the Navy. Um, one thing that was really cool was the, the naval base that we were filming at in San Diego was actually where he served. Oh, wow. When he was in the Navy, so it was kind of mm -hmm. touching. And um, For the research, what we did was we actually got to talk to real Navy SEALs and work with actual real SEAL Team 6 guys to kind of train a little bit of how we were doing it. And then the biggest part was because Michael Bay has such a relationship with the Navy and with the, the armed forces, we got the opportunity to uh, – to work, like I said, with real men and women of the Navy and, and to talk to those kids and find out why they were in the Navy and, you know, uh, how it affected their lives and things they've learned from it. That was the biggest thing. Yeah. To kind of hear their emotional story. And it's that's interesting to me because so much of this show is action. So much of this show is killing people and shooting totally. and doing whatever. Yeah. But there is an emotional side. We see it a lot with a lot of characters. Totally. Absolutely. I mean, that's the thing is, I mean, I think with any, any good TV, it's, it's not even, you know, it's people just in different playgrounds whether it's you're on a navy battleship or you're on friends and you're in an apartment in new york city drinking at central park it's it's really about the people and i think the last ship did a good job at that of, of making it about the relationships and, and how it's affecting each sailor what's going on in the world now i've got to wonder with you you've been on a lot of different stuff uh, we could run down the list you've guest starred on a ton of different major shows that we all watch is is this I don't know if you would call this like a big break or anything, but is this kind of your first thing where you say, okay, I established myself on a show. You're moving to a big second show now. Yeah. Do you, do you feel kind of at home and this is the right path? Totally, yeah. I mean, this this opportunity to do this show definitely, I feel like, took me a bit to the next level for sure. Um, and specifically the schedule of this show and how much work it was, I think that it was kind of like a, a boot camp for acting as well, mm -hmm. which kind of got us all ready to move on to something else. What was the schedule of filming? How much did you film in, in a certain amount of time? We would shoot uh, usually about 14 to 15 hour days every day. Um, so we'd start work around 5 a.m. Uh, and go all night. And how long, what was the most amount of days that you worked in one place at at one time well with the th we'd go down to san diego and we'd shoot on that battleship um for i think our longest stay down there was one month we were there every day wow. shooting on that ship how many locations were you at 
we shot the battleship, and then we had stages at Manhattan Beach Studios where they had the interiors of the ship that we shot at. But just just those two. And, yeah. and Guantanamo and, and the other places you guys. Oh no! Know. Right, yeah. <laughs> Thank you. No, we shot up in uh, Lake Lake Castaic was Guantanamo Bay, and I th- that was also the exteriors for the um, when they go to Puerto Rico, mm-hmm. and then they shot like the botanical gardens. But still, like a handful, like maybe like total, maybe like ten locations, if that. Yeah. 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 It's, it seems like it would have been a fun show to be on. Now, Tommy, please tell me. Let's bro out a minute here. Yeah, let's I, bro it down, buddy. I, let's cu- let's cut these girls out for a second. Mm-hmm. I don't understand the obsession with McSteamy. It's a big deal, right? <laughs> so handsome. Um, well, I'll tell you what so the obsession handsome. is. Uh, what's it like working with a cast like that? I mean, him, yeah. Adam Baldwin, a ton of people who've done a ton of stuff. Yeah. I think Charles Parnell is incredibly underrated. He's, yeah, he's but great. Charles. What what do you what do you glean from a cast like that? Do you just kind of hang out with them and, and learn stuff? To- as they go? Totally. One of the coolest experiences. We were in San Diego and. Um, after work, I went out to a bar, and it was Eric Dane and, and Adam Baldwin and Charles and the whole cast. Can you guys even imagine that? Aww. It was pretty awesome. <laughs> the cool thing was, too, because you see such a big cast, we'd, we'd go down there, and there'd be like 15, you know, 20 and 30-somethings, and then you'd have Eric and Adam, and you'd have Charles, kind of like, you know, the big brothers, but just literally sitting around just talking about, like, Baldwin worked with um, Kubrick on uh, Full Metal Jacket. Oh, wow. So it was like, tell us stories, and you just, <laughs> I mean, it was like a master's class in acting, and, and I mean... All super cool guys, and like I said, I've worked on a bunch of shows before, and I'd say this group of guys definitely treated everybody like peers, and didn't you didn't feel like they were you know McSteamy and that was Baldwin. <laughs> Please you, tell me you called him that. I you know what a couple times I did. <laughs> <laughs> he loved it. No, I was, is, is um, he cool about that? I assume he gets it. A lot. He yeah yeah. If you catch him at the right moment, yeah, he's fine. <laughs> but all super cool guys, and like I said, they're just yeah they were peers, and they treated us like we were just one of them and it was awesome well uh, my condolences on season two you've got something bigger and better coming up anyway yes but I'm, I'm sorry you're not <laughs> coming back for season you two. know i was really sad i mean I, over five months working with these guys and, and living in san diego for half the time and you, you become like a family so i got emotional when i when i saw this episode mm. and and you know i miss all those guys so, yeah. yeah do you get the script all at once do you know episode eight that is when it's no Diego? so what happened was um i think we were filming episode five at the time so it's three more episodes and i got a call from hank who's the creator and executive producer of the show and you know first he starts off by acknowledging me and be like you're so good we <laughs> love you so that's, much that's how you know it's bad well the funny thing was <laughs> me and uh, uh kevin michael martin who plays miller on the show so we were both talking we're like listen when our storylines start to take off that means one of us are dying <laughs> <laughs> so i finally get like episode five I'm like oh i started my arcs going okay what's gonna happen get the phone call anyway and he's like you know we love you but you know, that's why we're killing you because we feel like the audience is going to care about you. And, yeah, they were cool about it. And it's definitely, I mean, it worked. Yeah. I care. I was like, no. Awesome. Perfect. Yeah. <laughs> I, was <sad. laughs> I was sad. No, well, I, and I think you always were a certain, a sympathetic character to a certain aspect. Even when you were trying to, when your enlistment was up, when you were trying to leave the ship. Yeah. That was a tough thing. And it's like, right. you can't leave. But we understood the motives for doing that. Mm-hmm. I don't think you were ever an evil character. So totally. it makes sense mm-hmm. that that arc would come that way. Yeah. Yeah. It's just, you know, it's too bad. Cool. And yeah. You, you really yeah. won their trust back, right? You, you, you were at that place where nobody really liked you because of what you did on the boat and slowly you just kept on growing and growing and growing and you won everybody over exactly that's true which is great yes doesn't doesn't much help you for anything in the second season (laughs) no it doesn't (laughs) no No, it doesn't did you hear anything about the second season do you know anything are you at liberty to say uh i i have heard some about it i'm not liberty to say anything obviously (laughs) otherwise i would but uh maybe after this you know we go for some drinks and uh get chatty off off the record (laughs) just me and the ladies though not you (laughs) after 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 show (laughs) i will not be invited that's that's a tough thing (laughs) Uh, let's let's talk about Cassetti a little bit now sure. today, specifically in this episode. Yeah, we see we see you again gaining back trust, working with Danny to gain back trust. Yeah, uh, the relationships. I'm always interested in relationships, especially on military shows, because I think a lot of people sort of gloss over it. Yeah, and you look at Chandler as the commanding officer, and everybody has to be deferential to him. Right, but there's other. You know, uh, uh, hierarchies of deferential. Totally. You yeah. have to do it to Slattery. You got to do it to mm-hmm. Jeter. And you did it to Danny yeah. today. Yes. And it's interesting to see that relationship come through. Not only is Danny maybe a higher rank than you, but you're also trying to prove yourself to him. Back to him, exactly. So, uh, talk about creating a relationship like that with an actor like that. Do you set a backstory with each other to create some sort of deferential relationship, or do you just kind of go with what's on the script and say, "This has happened. Now, this is why I have to treat you this way." Uh, we definitely set a backstory, uh, specifically with that relationship. We got to work with. There was, at all times, there was a lieutenant 
actual of the Navy on set to make sure that everything that we were doing was correct and that we walked the right way, we talked the right way, we looked the right way. <clears throat> and we actually sat down with her, me and Travis Van Winkle, um, and, and to kind of understand that relationship because you have a scenario where, you know, he's a Navy SEAL and I'm an enlisted man um, and I become part of the SEAL team. But, yeah, it was interesting to figure out how that relationship would work because, <clears throat> again, you're, you're also in the show in general, there is no Navy left. So all that's left mm -hmm. is tradition and, 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 you know, every sailor himself keeping that going. So hope that answers the question. But, yes, we definitely yeah. had, to, had to sit there and, and figure out how that relationship would work. I, I, did you do any emotional preparation or whatever you want to call it on – I'm in this situation as Cassetti, yeah. you know, maybe my whole family's dead. Totally. How, how do you how do you emotionally prep something like that? Totally. I mean, uh, with that, you know, I, I did a lot of reading actually on that on that point exactly. Um, there's this great book, and I I don't remember the name, and I'm not going to, but <laughs> that talks about uh, it's about men and women of the Navy and, and when they're serving, and uh, specifically it was about a mission that was similar to the mission that this boat was doing, where there were radio silence. This is during World War II. Um, <clears throat> anyway, and, and you get that notion of, of not knowing what's happening and, and that fear there. But, yeah, I, just, I drew from real things in my life, and, and I mean, that helped a lot. But it, it, it was a scenario that I, I never had put myself in before, you know, that, that unknown of not knowing what's out there and worrying about it. But, yeah. And obviously when you do other shows, you yeah. pull off real-life experiences. Mm -hmm. But how did how is the preparation different for this show, being it – because you have to, it's Navy. It's totally different yeah. from any other show pretty much that's out there. You don't have specific things that you have to follow or people are going to say, well, that's not real. Yeah. Mm -hmm. No, exactly. I mean, specifically that. I mean, that's where having the Navy on set every day helped out a lot. And, and there would be times when we'd be doing stuff and the background actors would correct us and be like, <laughs> dude, you would never talk like that to the captain, <laughs> you know? Or like, your hat looks totally wrong right now. Just the funniest things. <laughs> so that helps so much. Um, and also, with every script, the Navy had to approve every script that was written wow. um, in order for us to use their ships and everything. So they were super involved. And without them, it wouldn't have worked. And, and we premiered the show in front of uh, 250 men and women uh, in Washington, D.C., of sailors. Oh, wow. Yeah, which is cool. And they only found four things that were wrong afterwards. Wow. <laughs> well, they are adamant way. about it. And they pointed <laughs> them out. Yeah, well, we're, we're like, not bad. Right? I, don't e I don't know. I don't know. What they, were. <laughs> they were like, I only saw four things. How was <laughs> that right. experience? Being Awesome doing something like that the premiere oh yeah. i mean incredible just the acknowledgement from them that that we did them proud and that we you know were authentic and and that uh, just when they would the beats would hit when they would laugh when you're supposed to laugh and like when <laughs> in, in the pilot episode um danny or travis and melissa when they kiss in the in the alley and they're all hooting and hollering you know what i mean <laughs> <laughs> it was it was an experience like I've no, the energy was just incredible it was it was so validating as an actor to see that they, they got what we were trying to do yeah, yeah. i've got to believe in that it's got to be such a fun thing we talk to actors all the time about this that mm -hmm. you get to become an expert in something as much of an expert as you can for a season or for a show or for whatever yeah you, you become an expert in the navy now you move on to the next totally thing, but it's kind of a cool it, it is everything is kind of a master class in becoming a sailor exactly and i, I mean the 10 year old version of myself was high-fiving me every day <laughs> I mean, I go shoot guns for a living right now so yeah no absolutely it's just how, it, how grow much, one role to another it's how awesome. much military training did you get things like shooting guns yeah. maybe physical combat did you do a lot of that in prep we did we did a lot of uh for shooting specifically we had to do a lot of that for prep um and then we actually said we had the real Navy uh, SEAL Team 6 on set all the time. And before we would do something, like even clear a room or like in the Gitmo episode, we had to clear the whole hospital and come out and this whole thing. They would take, we would take hours to show up there early and rehearse with these guys of how you clear these rooms, how you'd hold your gun, what different man would be the po point man, that kind of stuff. Yeah. yeah. Now, I've got to ask, and, and th you got to <coughs> give me something on this one. I know yeah. you can't talk about season two, but Shoot. on this, of all the people training shooting guns, of all the actors shooting guns, yeah. Who was the best and who was the worst? <laughs> Travis Van Winkle was the best. Really? Okay. Yeah. He's also the most handsome. <laughs> um, who was the worst? Man Crush Monday. Who's the worst? <laughs> That's a rough one to say. I can't say who's the worst. <laughs> was it was it you? Are we? Are no. we okay. <laughs> <laughs> Just want to make sure. <laughs> the only reason why I said that Travis was the best because I'd feel bad saying it was me because it was me. <laughs> um, who was the worst? I can't say who the worst was. Somebody I'm, definitely was so really bad. I'm, I'm just, you, you don't have to acknowledge either way, but yeah. ladies, I'm going to assume it was McSteamy. That's lies. No. I need, Nobody I need to have something. That. It wasn't McSteamy. I've got to have Nobody something. It wasn't McSteamy. <laughs> All right. Let, let's. I saw that face. I saw that face. <laughs> Eric was amazing. No uh, comment. No yeah. comment from him. Okay. Yeah. He's going to keep it tight. His publicist is sitting off. Yeah. Like, don't you dare say anything. <laughs> <laughs> you dare say anything. Oh, man. We're going to end a career here before the yeah. end of the show. Right. 
All right, well, it's let's, been fun. <laughs> <laughs> let's talk about the episode itself a yeah. little bit. And and Tommy, talk with us about you mm-hmm. know as a fan. I mean, jump in whenever totally. you want. We love analyzing this stuff. We're, yeah. We we nerd out on this stuff hardcore. But yeah. let's start with we we'll start with Ruskov, you guys. Um, we see him maybe more emotional today than he's ever been in a lot of ways. Very emotional yeah. in the first half of the episode. Very confident. Very tough. Almost a little you know sociopathic or psycho you know whatever you want to call it very very mean Mm -hmm. and then in that second half of the episode you can see the desperation and literal tears coming down his eyes i've got to think with him and he mentioned something i don't remember the specific words but it's not just about beating the americans winning the military battle he mentioned something about him like like replenishing the world him being the one to save the world yeah yeah Yeah. Yeah. that part right i think he also mentioned somewhere too it's whoever has the cure is the one who's going to actually rule the world yeah Mm -hmm. so i think it's not that uh you know, yeah, I don't gallant think of genuine. him. Yeah. But there's a part of that, yeah. but definitely I feel like the guy... Yeah. And, he, and he mentioned selling the cure. That yeah. was, he kind of right. hinted oh, exactly. at selling it. That's, yeah. What yeah. I, yeah. 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 That's what came across to me. Is like He was interested in the power and the money that would come from it. Totally. You know, and of course, he would be known as the man, but I think he was more interested in it for um, the wrong reasons. I would say so, Bullshit. but it was the American dream, man. Capitalism. Yeah, <laughs> yeah you're right. Supply he and demand. It out. You're right. <laughs> yeah. Maybe, maybe not with something like the virus vaccine. I just wonder what currency he's going to use. Do are we using rubles? Are we using dollars? <laughs> right at what that we, point. Yeah. Using gold. I don't Locks know. Locks of hair. Using. I think that's the currency <laughs> in the, the post-virus world. Oh man. Um, and then the interesting thing with him, the the emotion that he shows with the tears at the very or near the very end when he sees everything going up in flames we'll do predictions at the end but i have to believe we're not going to see too much more of the russians mm-hmm. not only did Sorensen get out with the virus and is theoretically killing people yeah. but the ship's literally blowing up around them so i've got to believe they're done and he sees all of his dreams good or bad all of his dreams are done they've yeah. disappeared this is it for him and a little part of me don't get mad at me a little part of me was sorry for him just to see his heart Totally break. Totally. I know he's a bad guy. Yeah. But you still have to feel a little bad. Yeah, you have to feel for the other sailors on that boat too and just yeah. know that it's not just they're not all like him, you know. Yeah. And but he was right. so sadistic, he's killing other ones in yeah. front of each other. Yeah. So yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Part of me think feels better for them that they're somewhat free. That out of his spell that they were under. I mean that guy seeing the, the guy that was sent into that was um the vaccine was put into him and sent Dimitri. into Dimitri. the um, the enclosed part. It nice. was like Wow, what? A, I mean, yeah. who does that? Or when what he kills kind of the other guy when they're, when they're in, I think, Cuba, right? When he yeah, shoots yeah. that was yeah. like the yeah. third episode. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. But it just showed how cold he was. And I saw it too. Like, once he realized that's it, he was, that there was no hope, his face completely changed. I was like, man, that is good acting. Good yeah. job, guy. Because no, he, he almost solid. got me to feel bad for yeah. him. But I was like, <laughs> no, you little, no, Russian man. <laughs> but you can I, say it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Lord knows we've talked this about worse on right? yeah. 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 No, we've said a lot worse on yeah. you. <laughs> uh, I do wonder that the one inconsistency, I guess, with it is as sadistic as he was for most of the for most of the season. Mm-hmm. I, I mean, I know that there's a little bit of honor amongst these guys, even though their navies are, are no more. And I and I kind of wanted to see him almost metaphorically tip his cap to Chandler right. and almost say, "You got me. You won fair and square." <sighs> You know, and, and yeah. he was, and it was almost a little bit of being a sore loser mm-hmm. in a certain extent, and maybe that's why he's not a sympathetic character because he is a right. sore loser. Right. So I, I don't know. I would have liked to see him tip the cap, but anybody who drinks tea out of those nice little tea glasses mm-hmm. in the, world <laughs> in the middle of all the Pinky explosions, so classy. Going on. Yeah, right? it's the classy like, oh. gentleman. <laughs> Explosion right there. He deserves whatever's coming to him. Maybe we won't. Maybe this is not the last we'll see of him. Maybe I he'll. I'm not convinced it is. Yeah, with yeah. all the explosions, I we know. didn't see anything. We just assume. Yeah. The ship yeah. could be going down, but I'm sure they've got a rescue boat or something. Exactly. I'm Sure you Although Nils walk through the uh, the boat and he's not infecting everybody, yeah. right. so yeah, I guess as long hey if he doesn't we'll get up see. into the into the captain's quarters into <laughs> that engine room, uh, whatever, yeah. maybe they're maybe, yeah. that's sectioned off. They're a little they're different. Yeah, <laughs> maybe Dimitri will be the only one who gets out. That would actually be something. He's the only one with the vaccine in him. Mm-hmm. That's a good point. That's yeah. right. Dimitri could get out. That's a great point. Hope... By the way, Dimitri begging for his life. This isn't incredibly central to the story, but. I mean, crying like a baby. I'm not saying I wouldn't, because I'm a huge baby. But Dimitri You're looked also a, not in the Navy. Exactly. He looked a little tougher. He's in the Russian Navy. He's a big dude. Crying like a baby the entire time whenever a gun gets pulled on him. I'm like, man, Ruskov, who do you have under you? Right. How tough are these guys? The world is ending. This is slim pickings. Yeah. That's what he has. That's all he has. But yeah, man, he really... I, I thought it was very interesting how he was so sure she did not have the vaccine, you know? she How he did not want her any of 
any of that vaccine in him or any of the virus when she injected him. I was like, man, you really don't think she has it? Don't, I don't you're think tripping. Any of them did. Well, uh, yeah. 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 It was crazy. Well, I didn't think she was ever going to get it until she actually got it. So congratulations to Dr. Scott. Yes. She did it. Well Yay. done. Clap for I, was I didn't think Dr. it was going to be this season. Having known there was a season right, two. Right, you wouldn't have thought that. Yeah. yeah. I, this, this episode is not yeah. what I expected yeah. at all. I didn't yeah. expect Chandler and Tex to be back on the American ship. I didn't expect the vaccine to now become. exist. <laughs> I, thought, I thought it was going to be this season because the last thing I want to see in this season, the one thing we haven't seen yet, yeah. we've got to go to land. Real mm-hmm. land. Not Guantanamo right. Bay in that quick foray into country. It's going to happen. Do. There we go. Maybe it will. We've got yeah. to bury Cassetti at sea, <laughs> and then we've got to yeah. go to, Aww. you know, Virginia Beach or wherever they're trying to get back yeah. to, we've got mm-hmm. to see some real land. So I, that's obviously coming up. But and, good for Dr. Scott. And the real question is, we don't know for sure that the vaccine works. That is also true. Yeah. Like, we, don't we know, know that, that she thinks she created and the monkey didn't die, but she, yeah. she's never tested on any, anybody. And we don't know if Dimitri's going to die or if he's already dead. And remember so. what she said when the guy came down, the guy she ended up shooting. She said, I have to give him the second dose of the vaccine. Mm-hmm. Now, we all kind of took that to mean she has to get her gun out. Mm-hmm. Right. Maybe there actually is a second dose of the vaccine. And she was being honest and then decided to kill the guy at that point. So who yeah. knows if, if Dimitri got half of it. Yeah, because yeah. it looked like, what was the name of the scientist on the Russian boat? Uh, Sorensen. It yes. looked like he was confused about that, too. Like, he was like, what yeah. second part? His yeah. face, and yeah. he was so interested in it. He was like, go ahead. Yeah. I'm just curious to see what you're going to do here, because yeah. I don't think there's a second dose. You're so good at these names, man. I just <laughs> Right? <laughs> when Seriously. Yeah. You do this for a living. <laughs> yeah, you got to be, I guess. <laughs> All of them. Oh. All of them. <laughs> when you, but I, I will say this, too. It's interesting how they portray the scientists on this show. Uh, Quincy and Sorensen specifically. Yeah. We know Ruskov's an evil guy. The rest of the Russians are, are kind of portrayed as sort of dumb followers, evil or not. They're just kind of in Ruskov's mm-hmm. grip. Right. But Quincy and Sorensen are, are outwardly evil in different ways for what they're doing and what they've done. Right. And that's kind of a cool thing that it's not just – I think that's an interesting little twist on the show. It's not mm-hmm. just military versus military dynamic, let's blow each other up. But there's this weird idea that the scientists aren't quite what they seem. And Scott isn't either, based on some of the stuff she said with her background. We don't know what's going on with her, right. even though she's right. a little more heroic right. yeah. than the other two. Um, but, I mean, but Nils, to be that guy and to have all that, that weighing on you, the fact uh, that you killed four billion people. Yeah. I mean, oh my how, did you, how do you even say that sentence with a straight – you killed four billion I, people. Yeah. As an actor, I don't even know how you process that. Like, you're I responsible. <laughs> That's insane. Maybe, maybe that as an actor is how you process it because it's so ridiculous. If you were in real life saying that, uh, how would you say it? Yeah. yeah. You'd have to be blank. Almost. Yeah. It's ridiculous. Yeah. Well, it's almost like he's in denial. And it wasn't well, yeah. I agree. Scott, like, Rachel was kind of drilling it into him what he'd done. Yeah. And even when the short um, flashback clip that they showed, when we kind of figured out that, that he was the one that added the human um, that I had the human gene – he, st- he was just in denial the whole yeah, time. Like, right. why don't you want to work with me? Yeah. I, I can cure this. I that was probably the first time anybody ever actually made him actually confront and look at the fact mm-hmm. that he, he was the one who did it. Yeah. Right. It was right then in that moment. Yeah, yeah. It, it, and there's and he's got a weird I, – I picked up a little bit of a stalker obsession on him with Scott. Fully. We know yeah. that Tex is into Dr. Scott. Yeah. I think on some level Chandler <laughs> is. I know he's got oh, a yeah. wife. I know he's not cheating. Sure. But on some level he is. So Dr. Scott just he does something. He was enjoying something. that She kiss. has the pick of the litter. <laughs> yeah, he was. He that was kiss. enjoying that kiss. Were you guys as shocked as me? I was like, yes. I was <laughs> shocked. No, we were. We were, were, you? We were yelling. Yeah. We were yelling. I was yeah. almost going to yeah. text you guys, but it was one in the morning. So <laughs> I'm not going to do that. But I was shocked. Yeah. It was great. Good job. <laughs> well, I'm glad that you approve. Okay. Yeah. I'm sure you'd like McSteamy in handcuffs so you could kiss him too. All day. <laughs> All day, every day. How about you, Tommy? McSteamy handcuffs making out? Yes, sir. Okay. Well, absolutely. Of course. So, just so we You're could... the only weird no, one, no, no, Bobby. Yeah, buddy. On this, case, on this case, let's get a consensus among the five of us. I'm into. You're right. There we go. Okay. Unanimous. I'm into. If it's, if, it's Unanimous. The end of the, if it's the end of the world and it's McSteamy make out or nothing, Hey, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Even if it's That's not it. the end of the world. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Even if it's a Tuesday at yeah. 7 o'clock, sure. Let's do oh, it. Lord. <laughs> let's talk about that kiss, though. This is a very cunning plot. Now, we make fun, not make fun, but we criticize the Navy a lot because in almost every episode, Chandler screws up or Slattery yeah. screws up or somebody makes a bad decision. They, they, you know, they almost starve the entire ship. They almost dehydrate the entire ship early right. on in the mm-hmm. show. Right. This was very cunning and very diabolical from the start. 
and it fooled us because we didn't get to see as much of the planning. But great job by Slattery, who at the start of this episode looked like he wasn't going to get it together. Totally. And it turned out he had a kick-ass plan. Yep. Um, I was surprised by him. Yeah. I don't know about you guys. He has definitely improved throughout the episodes. You know, we really yeah. didn't like him at the beginning, and we mm-hmm. didn't trust him, and he, right. he thought he would be like a back, backstabber or something. And he came a long way, and he proved that he's very loyal to Chandler. Yeah. And um, he did a good job, except for that joke. You didn't like the joke? <laughs> <laughs> You were waiting for the joke. I was laughing because it was awful, uh, not because it was funny. Yeah. <laughs> right? Come on. I think everybody was like, oh, what was that? Well, but that's that's an interesting, that's another relationship. Is the relationship yep. those two guys have with the crew. And Chandler is very tough. And he's very nice. And he's very fair. But he's very tough and he's very professional. And Slattery is obviously professional too. But things like that joke, it's sort of a good cop, bad cop. When Chandler's right. here, mm-hmm. the ship is run tight, theoretically speaking. When Chandler's gone and chaos reigns, Slattery's like, you know what? I can't get to him the same way, so I need to find a different way to gain their confidence and gain right. their trust. And a stupid joke that everyone knows is stupid right. is, is what's going to do it. Sure. And I think I you have to be like that because people don't want Slattery to come along and think that he's just taking the place of Chandler. That's not what people want to look up to. They're not going to look up to, to him if they think they're just, he's just taking over. Right. So he needs to take a different angle, and he did. I love the response. You're going to know who is. What's the name of the guy after Slattery? Jeter. Thank you. Yeah. Jeter. <laughs> I, I blanked out. I loved when Slattery was like, and I told the joke, and he's like, good one, sir. Like, it was just <laughs> not, but it, he, yeah. supported, he supported him. Yeah. Yeah. He's like, yep, you are the captain yeah. right now. And yes, yeah. it was funny. No, it was excellent. Those are the two key words right now, and you said it too. Slattery is treating it as, yes, I'm, I'm your commanding officer, and we need to maybe assume Chandler's not coming back, but really... Chandler's coming back, and it's just mm-hmm. a temporary situation. Right. So deal with me, and we'll get him back. And sure enough, they do. Yeah. Unfortunately, it's at the uh, sacrifice of Cassetti. Mm. Sorry, man. That's all right. <laughs> <laughs> but you did take a few Russians down. I don't know what the whole body count was, but I we saw did. you shoot 25. at least. 25. I killed 25 Okay, of them. cool. Exactly. All right. Yeah. So, so, I killed all of them, actually. So <laughs> you, were, were you teaching, like, Chuck Norris anything about fighting or shooting or anything like <laughs> yeah, that? Because you yeah. killed 25 uh, guys. Yeah, it's just, you know, all a day's work. <laughs> no, no big deal. Yeah. You're going to be guest no starring on a new Walker, Texas <laughs> Ranger episode next week. <laughs> but the, the cool thing about Cassetti is – Danny. Let's talk Danny and Cassetti in this situation because Danny has been a bad boy for much of this season. His whole thing with Foster and all that sort of stuff. He's not exactly on the up and up sometimes. And I understand maybe they're in love, whatever you want to say. It's still not the right thing to do. And they both knew that. Yeah. So Danny has a lot of respect to be gained back from other people. Yeah. So on some level, he's got a lot of nerve to talk respect to you. Right. Sure. But he does. And there is this dynamic of a Navy SEAL versus just an enlisted man, which I assume in your research, a SEAL, not not to disparage anybody, but a SEAL has got to believe we have better training, we're a little higher than they exactly. There is a difference. They demand respect even if you're senior to them yeah. for what they do. Yeah. yeah. I mean, think about it too. Danny's been through a lot. Danny, I mean, lost in the pilot. Uh, yeah. Right. Frankie? Frankie Benz. Yeah. And then lost um, the two other Navy SEALs when he sent them to go blow up the reef that was his call yeah so now i mean he sent four people on his call to their death and he had his sickness where he literally was on his death yeah, yeah right. exactly so he so. has been through a lot yeah and, yeah and then that whole situation with foster in the boat when he wanted her to jump out exactly yeah he has been through that a lot could end a badly too yep yeah, yeah. <laughs> so maybe he's not good at giving calls <laughs> yeah <laughs> but, but that's kind of the point maybe he's not as good as he thinks he is but he still has the audacity to demand respect from you sure. and it's a, it's it's you're kind of caught between a rock and a, you i'm saying it like you actually because <laughs> said he's kind of caught between a rock yeah. and a hard place you have to respect him you've got to go along to get along yeah you, you have to the mission is comes first and at the same time you do want to prove yourself to him but i gotta believe a little bit of his like dude you screwed up some stuff in the past. Don't get, <laughs> yeah. don't get too uh, high and mighty with me right now. <laughs> yeah, I don't know if Cassetti was thinking that. I think he was blinded by what you were saying, just wanting to win back the captain's respect and the yeah. XO and, and the Master Chief. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. I, I did like uh, to talk about a longer Cassetti story arc yeah. with you and Bacon and everybody else who, yeah. who, who was able to de-enlist and then came back. Yeah. That seemed like relatively a seamless transition. We saw the ceremony obviously re-enlisting and stuff to kind of cap that. Yeah. But it seemed like after that there really wasn't an issue with mm-hmm. anybody. I mean, they had that one moment in that – I think it was the next episode where um, Miller's selling music to a chef. Mm-hmm. I'm like, hey, buddy. And the guy's like, whatever. And Miller's like, don't worry, it's cool. Yeah. <laughs> um, so that was supposed to illustrate yeah. that. But, yeah, soon after is when I go on the, the – we go save Patrice. So, yeah. Yeah. 
Yeah. And I feel like if it had been any other situation that maybe those guys would have got a little bit more of a hard time, but because this is such a yeah. crazy situation that's going on and such a big mission that they're now having to deal with, exactly. that everyone's kind of just like, well... And I also feel like everybody could, to probably some extent, understand and go, I get that you want to leave. I mean, yeah, you're not mm-hmm. in the Navy anymore, but... So I feel like there's some, you know, slack given to a degree yeah. there. Yeah, and slack given that the Navy doesn't exist. That's the, thing, I, yeah. right, right. the thing about Chandler doing his, his serial number or whatever, and Ruskov is like, Geneva doesn't exist. The Geneva yeah. Conventions aren't, yeah. it doesn't matter anymore, yeah. man. Yeah, exactly. So, and that's an interesting thing that, that you need strong commanding officers with Chandler, with Slattery, and Jeter. Yeah. Because you were talking about this, more tradition than, than actual Navy now because yeah. there is no Navy. Mm-hmm. So those three guys really have to hold up on the tradition. Chandler does a great job of it. The problem is he's been off the ship now quite a bit. Yes, he loves <laughs> so. taking trips off the ship, doesn't he? <laughs> and it's got to be him. It can't be anybody else. No. It's got to be You know, be I think that's, besides making a great story, obviously, <laughs> I, I think for his character, what he was is just he would rather put himself in harm's way than anybody else. Yeah. You know, because he feels responsible for all of us. And that fact that, again, there is no Navy anymore. So he's like, I can't ask these guys to go do this. Right. And I wonder about that, putting yourself in harm's way. I've got to wonder, this will be ir- ir- unfortunately irrelevant to Cassetti now, but for these other guys, is episode 9, 10, season 2, yeah. when they start finding out, my family's dead, everybody's dead, nobody survived. Ruskov said he has nothing left to lose. The Russians kind of have that attitude. Yeah. At what point do the Americans start taking that attitude? And not that they'll make bad decisions, but it will get a little more renegade, and they maybe reckless. will get a little yeah. more reckless. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm yeah. sure because they're still hopeful right now, right? Exactly. You a lot of them mind. haven't been able to contact their families or see if yeah. they're alive. So, want it or not, you, they're thinking, you know, they're they're, they're fine. Right. You know, I will we'll see them again. And once they get to land and they realize how bad it is and how they may have nobody then things might change yeah. and in their perspective of whether they want to continue doing what they're doing or just go on their own yeah not knowing gives them hope mm-hmm. yeah that's yeah. what it is exactly or or it slowly kills them inside maybe maybe some of them yeah. would rather know you know maybe you'd rather just know good or bad and then you can say okay now let's focus on right what yeah. we have to now do we here. Can deal yeah. with it. yeah but i don't think it's gonna get like you said maybe season two episode 10 that's when it'll start to get like that but right now still i think it's still kind of fresh to them they're still like we don't know Let's let's not lose faith. Totally. At least not at this point. Yeah. Yeah. Now, Tommy, I've got to ask you because this is going to transition perfectly to our next character. Please tell me mm-hmm. that Tex, the actor who plays Tex, is the funniest guy. JP. Please tell oh, me. Oh yes. Yeah. He's a cool dude. He's definitely he, a cool you dude. You can't. You. Can, I don't even know anything about him, but you yeah. can't look the way he looks yeah. and not be cool. No, JP is awesome. <laughs> <laughs> but he's also one of those guys. Like when we first met him, we were all staying in San Diego. We we get up and. He's in the gym. We're all going to the gym lifting because we're all seals, and he's doing yoga. You know what I mean? It's <laughs> like totally, totally. We're like, all right. But that's kind of who the guy is. Yeah, he's just like yeah. this total, like, you know, he's awesome. He's a cool dude. Yeah. He's that's something perfect. else now. Yeah. How much jealousy did he have? <gasps> he was so bummed. Oh, poor guy. And so I shouldn't say jealousy. It, it wasn't malicious, but it was more heartbreak. Yeah, yeah. He just exactly. said. Yeah, he yeah. just didn't get chance. it. He was like, you have a wife and kids. Yeah. 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 Let it go. Yeah. Let me have a... And remember, yeah. he has been a, a mercenary, essentially. He's yeah. been a hired gun in Guantanamo Bay. Yeah. So who knows his romantic situation for much longer than totally. just the virus. Yes. Yeah. It's been a while. He's yeah. been hanging out with, with prisoners oh. from the Middle East <laughs> exactly. for a while. Poor guy. Yeah. I, can, I can feel for him. And, yeah. and Foster shot him down, or that never happened, yeah. obviously. Yeah. Now Rachel Scott shoots him down. Mm-hmm. I don't know who else is left. Well, technically, we don't know that she shot him down. Right. Yeah. She had to do what she did okay. to give Chandler the, the So you're, you're yeah. saying there might still be a shot? I think so. Yeah. I have faith in Tex. <laughs> yeah, humor goes a long way. <laughs> That's true. See, he's a funny guy. Uh, humor, a little levity in these situations, uh, absolutely. And yeah. you're on a ship with a bunch of Navy guys, with a bunch of sailors. Yeah. They're a little tougher, a little more manly. But they don't necessarily have the same personalities. Mm-hmm. So you let that personality shine through. I'm giving exactly. dating advice right now. <laughs> you let that personality shine through. You never know. Yeah, there you, have you a go. Shot. There you go. Yeah. I don't we'll know. See. He's interesting, though, in the show, obviously. He's the perfect complement to Chandler to be in that tiny little jail cell. Because yep. if yeah. it were Chandler alone, he would either be not talking. Or if it were Chandler and anybody else. If it were Chandler and Cassetti, mm-hmm. you'd either be not talking or just you know, just talking about very specific mission stuff. Yeah. And Tex is a little more, he's fun. He wants to talk to Steve McQueen movie. Exactly. Yeah. What's also cool is because he's not in the Navy, so he does have that respect of Chandler, but that etiquette's not necessarily there. Yeah. So he can do mm-hmm. that kind of stuff, which is fun. And get away with it. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. 
It's yeah. probably fun on set, right? Where everybody else is getting um, scolded and reprimanded. Yeah, and it's yeah. like, eh, I don't have to do that. <laughs> <laughs> totally. <laughs> Whatever. Totally. totally. That's funny. Yeah. That's, <laughs> and, that's, and that's the interesting, the other interesting thing about Tex is the etiquette idea with the Navy, but also kind of the idea that he's proven himself so many times now yeah. on the show yeah. mm -hmm. that he's playing with house money in the sense that they know he's legit. When he first came on, I remember we predicted on this show, eh, I don't know about this guy. Mm -hmm. He came out of this prison in Guantanamo. He might not be good, yeah. but yeah. he proved himself again and again. And now if you're text on the show, you're like, you know what? We're in some hairy situations. I got to do this again. But these guys trust me. Yeah, mm -hmm. totally. And, I mean, and, that, and they figured that out with the writing. I mean, when he started, he, he's now a regular on the show for season two, but he started yeah. as a guest star. Thank God he's a regular. Yeah. That's the yeah. best news. Yeah. yeah, yeah. But he, when it started, he was just, you know, and they saw that relationship and they loved it. And they, they were right. It's awesome. And I said yeah. last week during predictions, I think it was a week ago right here in this chair, yeah. I said if Tex Nolan, when he was sitting in the water and, and he hadn't been taken. You know his last name. I don't think it was even in the scripts. I know. Okay. I said if yeah. Tex Nolan doesn't get rescued by somebody, if he dies in the water, yeah. I'm walking out of the <laughs> I'm well, done. luckily he did it. Luckily he he's did. here. Uh, yeah. I, I unfortunately didn't say the same thing about Cassetti. No, uh, um, I apologize. <laughs> <laughs> um, all right, let's talk a little bit about you now, Tommy. Other stuff other than the last sure. year. We'll do, we'll do predictions in a second, but before we get there, I yeah. want to talk about everything you're doing. You're doing State of Affairs right now, currently filming it with Catherine Heigl. And currently, was today the first day of shooting, or have you guys been Yes, shooting? it was today. It and was it, this it, morning. So you're playing hooky. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, it was an this, early morning. This is the kind of yeah. thing we get at After Buzz. We pull people <laughs> off their important careers to talk to us. Um, talk a little bit about that. Katherine Heigl's a big name. I always think Knocked Up, one of my favorite yeah, movies. Yeah, she's But awesome. she's been in a little show oh, called yeah. Grey's Anatomy. I don't no, know if you heard of it. Yeah, she won an Emmy with, for it. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, yeah, with Nick Steamy. Yeah. With Nick Steamy. From one Grey's to another. Wow. I know, right? Yeah. So have, have you guys traded Eric Dane notes at all yet? We totally have. We totally have. <laughs> Eric, yeah. No, I was actually with Eric when I found out I got this show. Oh, wow. And I told him, and he was, yeah, he was happy. He was like, Give her a big kiss for me. And I was like, I don't know if that's going to happen, but I'm telling her hello. <laughs> What's it like? I mean, not only working with her, but being yeah. on set like this. You're, you're filming it here in L.A., I believe we were talking yes. about. Yes, yeah, um, Universal. And, and San Diego's not far away, of course, but it's got to be cool to film right in your own backyard. No, it's wonderful. I mean, we shot the pilot for the show in New York, which is also because mm -hmm. that's where I'm from, which is kind of cool. But, no, it's 10 minutes door to door for me, <laughs> from my house to, this, to the oh, sound nice. stage, which is, yeah, you can't beat that. <laughs> nice. It's awesome. Nice. Talk uh, a little bit about the, the character you're playing, what you're doing. It is, I'll read the, the log line for you guys. A CIA officer plucked from the field to become the president's daily briefer, mm -hmm. assuming responsibility for targeting America's most critical threats while navigating the unique lifestyle that comes with such a high-powered job. <laughs> yeah. So it's going <laughs> to be intense. It's going to be a romantic <laughs> comedy. Yeah. Yes. Obviously. Exactly. Yeah, there's a talking dog. It's great. <laughs> talk, how, how long ago, uh, talk to us about the process of starting a show. I'm always fascinated by the timeline. How long ago did you find out? How much time yeah. have you had to prepare? And what's the future filming schedule look like? Yeah, so we started, we, we shot the pilot in uh, February, end of March, we shot the pilot. Um, and that was three weeks in New York City. And then we literally didn't do anything until today. So it's been, what's that, six months about? Yeah. Is that right? Um, so that was cool. The pilot, literally, you, you find out kind of and you have like a couple days to fly to New York and start working. Um, and everybody's kind of figuring out who they are as a character, what the show is. So the pilot's interesting because um, there's not too much room and time for you to develop a character yet. But what was great was we were one of the last pilots that were shot this pilot season. So we found out <clears throat> uh, in May, in early May, that we were picked up. Mm. So we had some plenty of lead time to, to work. And... Um, yeah, one of the things that we all did was um, we went on a, a trip together to Utah, oh. the whole entire cast, uh, about three weeks ago so that we could kind of – because we haven't seen each other in five months and we have to be best friends on the show. So we're like we should all go on vacation together and kind of rekindle, mm -hmm. you know, which was cool. The, the, this is just a cool job. Right? Yeah. yeah. Like going on vacation in Utah. No, this yeah. is work. Trust me. <laughs> Trust me. Have you ever done that before, gone on vacation Never. or done something prior? Never. No, no. And that was a suggestion of Catherine's to do oh. that. Um you know, okay. she's one of the executive producers of the show, so it's kind of cool having that where you have an actor who also has, you know, they're in the ring for you right. mm -hmm. in the producer's corner. Other interests exactly. in the show. Yeah, so she's able to be like, let's all go to Utah, and we're like, all right, <laughs> let's go to Utah. I think it's got to be cool. I mean, obviously, you all are very serious about what you do as a job and a yeah. career and something you love, but it's probably cool to have an actor who is also in Katherine Heigl a producer because she's got a couple dogs in the fight now, and it's sort of a different intensity level for her. Exactly. That's the, that's the thing, and... You know, she's very clear about, like, if there's anything that 
that the other actors don't like or, or have suggestions story-wise to please you know tell her and then she goes to bat for us if needed yeah, yeah. she's awesome, awesome. And you just added sorry you just yeah. added producer to your resume are you yes. excited to kind of learn more tricks from her totally yeah i mean she's i mean you know she's she's huge you know what i mean so yeah absolutely i was I, just gonna ask yeah how was experiencing utah like utah yeah like how was the trip? Like yeah, what the, like, it was can great. Can you tell us any stories? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, any crazy stories? Uh, you know, it was us? it was pretty relaxed and adult okay. the trip. But okay. uh, you know, we rode horses. We it was just like it was like going to camp. <laughs> <laughs> we literally me and Adam. Uh, Adam was one of the actors on the show. Adam Kaufman and Cliff Chamberlain. We shared bunk beds. Oh my uh, god! Yeah, like amazing. it was literally like camp. Like we all went to camp. It was pretty cool. So you go from lifting weights with a bunch of guys yeah. on a Navy set to yeah. sharing bunk beds. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, okay. yeah. Uh, you, you sound like a fourteen-year-old. I'm not complaining. <laughs> I don't like it. Yeah, that sounds amazing. good to me. Yeah, it was great though. Um, we'll talk a little bit about your character, the show. I mean, sure. obviously it's very early on, but what can we expect with it? Yeah. Um, like I said, the show is, you know, we're, we play CIA analysts who are also briefers, and these are real people and have real positions in the CIA. Um, basically, the CIA is full of analysts, and they just analyze information from around the world, and they pass it up the lines to the higher hierarchy. And we're kind of the end of the line. So we get all the information, and our job is to filter through it and find out what's the most pressing stuff that's happening or the most relevant. And then we take that information, and we make a, a book called The President's Daily Briefing Book, and then we present it to the president. And then she tells us what things to do um, or what things not to do or what she wants more information on. And then we go ahead and do that, which is cool. A female, um, a female president? Yes, Alfre Woodard. There Ooh, you go. Yes. Oh, okay. Yes, girl power. <laughs> yes. Is it a prediction for the future? Maybe. <laughs> Good so one. I see where you're going. Oh. President? Maybe. I got gotcha. you. Right, sneaking it in there. Maybe. Um, are you tapping yeah. our phones right now? I absolutely am. Yes. Okay. Can yeah. you can you give me some insight on some text messages I'm going to receive later? <laughs> uh, be careful when you go to sleep tonight. So oh, boy. <laughs> Next team is wow. coming for you. Yes, exactly. Oh, no. Exactly. I'm so no, jealous. But one of the things was I got to actually go and visit Langley, the CIA headquarters, oh, wow. which was awesome. And they had to vet me for like a month. I had to do background checks, this whole thing. Be able to wow. Go, which was crazy. Um, but I, I freaked out. I was like, are you guys checking my phone? I left my phone in the car. <laughs> Look at my text messages, my web her browser history. <laughs> they already uh, knew. They already, they <laughs> already do know. They really do. They know everything. Um, but that was cool. That's how. That's the main way I prepared for this role is I got to go there for two days, um, and I stayed in D.C. for a week, uh, and got to talk to all these real analysts and mm. hang out with the CIA, which was cool. That's so you cool. go from the Navy to the CIA. You, you, you're developing a lot of skills and a lot of knowledge that yeah. I think one day you're going to become a danger. To I society. guess so. Right. Yeah. I guess so. Yeah. So just do a baseball movie. <laughs> yeah, might as well, right? <laughs> Calm down. Please. I know. <laughs> so uh, when does I know it's filming just yeah. started, but any idea when it's coming out? Yeah, November seventeenth, uh, oh, Mondays okay. at nine p.m. We take over for the blacklist when they go on hiatus. Oh, okay. yes. There you go. I think, and you guys talked about we are going to do that show on after. Are you? Yeah, yeah, yeah it was on the list. So well, good. I'll be I'm back. Sorry. So it's on Mondays. Yeah, if, it's Mondays if, at 9 if we don't Where see you on night? the seventeenth, yes, we're gonna have a bone to pick. <laughs> All right, Jordan. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's do uh, predictions right now. And, Tommy, we're going to involve you in. Shh, predictions oh, for the rest of the season? Absolutely. That's not fair. <laughs> <laughs> I know everything. You're after Buzz TV. Uh, predictions. I predict you take a swim. Okay. Your body. Well, if you were to watch what's the happening preview, next week, you would yeah. have seen my body doing that, that's so a, that's a stone you'd be cold. correct. <laughs> that's a stone-cold prediction. <laughs> Charlotte, let's start with you. What are you predicting? I don't think the Russian's done. Okay. Um, I don't. I think there's another strain of the virus that hasn't that she doesn't have a vaccine for. Obviously, Beatrice gets sick, so something has gone wrong, or something's happened for her to now get sick. Mm -hmm. Um. Yeah, that's all I have right now. Um, I think they're gonna go to land, and um, it's gonna be a little chaotic. I don't think they're ready for what's coming. You know, a lot of people are gonna be coming out and wanting help, and it's gonna be like too much, and they're gonna try to push them away. You know, it might even cause some problems. Um, I kind of agree with you. I think, I just keep thinking that Dr. Scott, you know, said that it's a mutating virus. So that's why maybe now Beatrice is getting sick because maybe the virus is mutate, mutating and finding a way to, you know, get her sick. I don't know. So I think there's going to be some troubles with the vaccine. Um, maybe not next episode, but next season. Interesting. And how do you produce a vaccine like that much of the vaccine <clears throat> that's needed? 
Because they use her blood, right? They use Beatrice's bit, yeah. blood. Yeah. <laughs> Every day, I just... For <laughs> 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 uh, a girl. That's a good point. How about you, Monsi? You guys both kind of took some of my <laughs> predictions. I don't think the Russians are done, but not all of them. I think maybe like a couple of them. Ruskov, more essentially, I think he gets saved by a safety boat or a small boat or something. And I do think they're going to go to land and they're going to encounter another problem. Whether it's people, whether it's more information on the virus, but I, they're going to get to land and it's, it's not going to be easy. Tommy, take it away. <laughs> anything, <laughs> anything, anything you're allowed to maybe tease us with? I'll just say one of you guys right, isn't I, far off. Oh! <laughs> of course that's happening. I will say this. This is my prediction. It kind of ties into some of you guys, but the Russians to me are done. I think Ruskov and all those guys are done. But remember, there's one guy on that Russian ship who's not dying from the virus, and that's the guy with the virus. It's Sorensen. And I think he gets off the ship, finds a boat, something happens. We have not seen the last of Sorensen. I don't sure. know what it means. I don't know if he's in a rescue boat in the middle of the ocean himself, and maybe it's irrelevant, but I think he gets off the ship. Technically, yes. he comes from the Russian ship. So technically, he was a Russian survivor. Technically. But he's, he's, he's Swedish or whatever. Come on. But technically. Oh, man. All right. Hey, social media links and stuff like that. Tommy, let's start with you. Twitter, Instagram, you got anywhere people can find you? At Tommy Twos on Twitter. And uh, no, no, no. That's wrong. Sorry. His, at his, Tommy his, Savis on Twitter. <laughs> at Tommy Twos on Instagram. His publicist is like, no, get this right. <laughs> at Tommy Savis on Twitter. At Tommy yeah, Savis. All right, enough. ladies, Twitter. You can find me at Charlotte B underscore TV or CharlotteBorbanTV.com. You can find me on Twitter and Instagram at Rena Brazil. You guys can find me on Twitter and Instagram at Monsi Bolanos. And I'm on Twitter at Bobby DeMiro on Instagram at Mr. Bobby DeMiro. Tommy, thank you very much for My joining pleasure, us today. This is a lot of fun. Thank you. Thank you. So fun. I, uh, please, if you see Eric Dane again, tell them that the ladies say hi. I will, yes. absolutely. Uh, yes. You got it, ladies. And if you see, when, when you see Catherine Heigl, tell her I say hi. Okay, <laughs> good deal. <laughs> yeah. good. There we go. That's it this week on The Last Ship, guys. We'll be back next week. We've only got two more episodes before the season finale. That's going to be a good one. So we will see you next Monday afternoon for more Last Ship. Ship. Good night. From executive producers Maria Menunos, Kevin Undergaro, Phil Svitek, and the entire Afterbuzz TV staff, we would like to thank you for listening to the Afterbuzz TV network. To watch or listen to other after shows and post comments or questions, be sure to visit AfterbuzzTV.com. I'm Sir Richard Wentworth, and this has been a presentation of Afterbuzz TV. Buzz you later. The views expressed herein are those of the hosts only and do not necessarily reflect the views of AfterBuzz TV or its owners or principals. Thank you for watching AfterBuzz TV on YouTube. For more of your favorite after shows and interviews, subscribe to our channel here and be sure to share your opinion on the episode in the comment section below here. We'd love to see what you guys are buzzing about. Thanks again. Buzz you later. <laughs> <laughs>